In this video, I'll be teaching you how to determine whether a number is a factor of a given number. And just a quick review before we start again um, what a factor is. A factor is any number that's multiplied by another number to make a product. A factor times a factor equals a product. In our last lesson, we were determining how to find the factors of a given number. Now, we're going to teach you how can you determine whether or not a number is a factor of another number. So just a couple examples of factors. 5 and 3 are factors of 15. 4 and 2 are factors of 8. The first way that I'm going to show you to determine whether or not a number is a factor of another number is to draw a model. Now in this model, I want to determine whether or not 2 is a factor of 15. And to do that, I want to see if I can draw a model using 15 tiles and drawing in two rows. So I'm going to see, I'm going to start by drawing two rows of one. See, I have two rows, and there's one in each of my rows. I'll draw two rows of two. So far, so good. And I've used four tiles. I want to use 15 total. Let's try two rows of three, two rows of four, two rows of five. So far, I've used 10 tiles. Two rows of six, two rows of seven. So I've used 14 of my tiles. Now, I only have one more to use. So I run into a bit of a problem here where I've already used 14 tiles and I've got this nice array, but I have to use one more tile. And whether I put it here or I put it here, it's no longer going to be a rectangular array. And so because I cannot make an array using 15 tiles in two rows, two is not a factor of 15. So I was not able to um, make that array. If I was able to make the array, then I would say uh, then 2 was a factor of the number. If I had one more tile, for example, 2 would be a factor of 16, but not of 15, because I could not make an array. This missing piece here throws us off a bit. Let's try another example. I'm going to try to see whether or not 4 is a factor of 20. So this time, I'm going to use 20 boxes, 20 tiles, and I'm going to try to make um, arrange them in four rows. So I'll start by drawing one row, excuse me, four rows of one, three, and four. I've got four rows going here. Now here's four rows of two. I've used eight tiles. Four rows of three. I've used 12 tiles. Four rows of four. I've used 16 tiles. And I have four more to go. And I will add now, I have four rows of five. So one, two, three, four rows, and one, two, three, four, five in each row. And I used all 20 of my tiles. So I have four rows of five. And I was able to make an array. You remember back to the previous problem, I had a missing piece right here, and so I was not able to make an array. So 2 was not a factor of 15. But with this example, I was able to make an array. So I can say, yes, 4 is a factor of 20, because I was able to make that array. 4 is a factor of 20. Okay, so one way to find out if a, if a number is a factor of another number is try to draw a model and see if you can make an array or if you can't make an array. The second way I'm going to show you to determine whether a number is a factor of another number is by using division. So for this problem, I want to see, is 3 a factor of 45? Well, I'm going to divide 45 divided by 3. Now the key here is to see whether or not I get a remainder at the end. I'll start here in my tens place. I have four tens and I have three groups. I can share four tens with three groups. Each group will get one. One times three is three. So I'm going to take away three tens. Four tens minus three tens is one ten. Bring down my five ones and regroup. Now I have 15 ones. 15 divided by three is five. 
Each group gets five ones. Five times three, 15. And you'll see I don't have a remainder. I got all the way to zero. And because I divided and I got to zero, I can say that yes, three is a factor of 45. So I was able to get down to zero. So just do division and see if you get to zero with no remainder. Let's look at another example. I want to determine whether or not 7 is a factor of 38. Well, let's see. I'll try to 38 divided by 7. Let's see. 3 tens divided by 7 groups. Now I don't have enough tens. I'll regroup the, my 3 tens as 30 ones. 38 ones divided by 7. Let's see. To figure this out, I'm going to write out my sevens here. This is a good strategy to use if you don't, if you're just learning how to do this. You can um, write out your facts to see which number you're going to take away. I'm going to get as close to 38 as I possibly can. Seven times four is 28. I think I can get a little closer. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six equals 40. Two. Okay, now I didn't get 38, but I suppose I could take away uh, I could take away 35. This is the one I'm going to use here. So I can take away 35. And that's 7 times 5. Each group would get 5. 5 times 7 is 35. And I take away and I've got 3. And I can't share these 3 ones with 7 groups. So I have a remainder. Three, And because I have a remainder, because my remainder is not zero, seven is not a factor of 38. It was not, I was not able to divide it evenly. So seven is not a factor, I'm going to run out of room here, of, let me squeeze it in, 38. There, it's not a factor because when I divided, there was a remainder. Remember in my last example, when I did 45 divided by 3, there was no remainder. But with 38 divided by 7, there is a remainder. So 7 is not a factor of 38. It did not divide evenly. There's one other way you can use to determine whether or not a number is a, a factor of another number, and that's using divisibility rules. These are some rules where you can basically look at a number and know whether or not it is a factor of another number. And we'll go through a couple of these here. First one is the number 2. You can tell if a number is divisible by 2 if the number is even. Okay, for example, 2, 4, 16, 58, 1,000. All of these numbers, they end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or a 0 here. These numbers are even, which means they are divisible by 2. Or I could say, 2 is a factor of each of these numbers. For the number 3, the divisibility rule is the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. What that means is you add up the digits in the number and see if that sum is divisible by 3. Take 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes, 6 is divisible by 3. So 15 is divisible by 3. Look at this example, 36. Add, the, add the, um, the digits together. 3 plus 6 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? Yes. 105. It's like, whoa, 105, it's really high. But just add the digits. 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes. So 105, just by looking at it, you can tell it's divisible by 3. The next one's one of my favorites. It's really easy. Divisibility by 5. All you have to do is look at the last digit. If it's a 0 or a 5, it's divisible by 5. 5 is a factor of 5, 10, 15. Oh, I jumped up to 80. That's okay. It ends with a 0. I know that 5 is a factor of 80 because it ends in a 0. What about this number? 2,845. But it ends with a 5. That's all you need to know. If it ends with a 5 or a 0, it is divisible by 5. This next one is interesting, the divisibility rule um, by 6. And it's actually a combination of the 3 rule and the 2 rule. A number is divisible by 6 
if it is even and divisible by 3. So you have to look at the 3 rule again. Look at this example, 12. Um, first of all, it's even because it ends with a 2. And if I add the digits together, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is divisible by 3. So because it's even and because its digits are divisible by 3, 12 is divisible by 6. That's a little, that one's a little long. Look at this number, 36. Is it even? Sure, it ends with a 6. Add the digits together. 6 plus 3, 9. 9 is divisible by 3. So 36 must be divisible by 6. Look at this number, 102. Well, ends with a 2, must be even. And 1 plus 0 plus 2 is 3, and that is divisible by 3. So 102 must be also divisible by 6. And finally, for 9s, the 9s divisibility rule is very similar to the 3 rule. It's exactly the same, you just change the number. A number is divisible by 9 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. Take the example 18. Just add the 1 plus the 8, you get 9. And 9 is divisible by 9. 108. <gasps> See what I did there? 1 plus 0 plus 8 uh, still adds up to 9, which means it's divisible by 9. And then 5 plus 0 plus 4, well, adds up to 9, and that is divisible by 9 as well. And you can also use larger numbers um, that might add up to um, you know, other multiples of 9. As long as it's divisible by 9, when you add the digits, it works with 9. Let's try an example. Can we use divisibility rules to determine whether or not 6 is a factor of 72? Look at this number, 72. Remember, for it to be divisible by 6, it has to be even first. Is it even? Yes, it ends with a 2. Okay, the other requirement is that the number also be a multiple of 3, or divisible by 3. I already know that it's even. Add the digits together. 7 plus 2 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? Yes. So 72 is divisible by 3, and it's even, okay? So it is divisible by 3, and it's even. And that will tell me uh, 72 also is even. And because these two things are true, yes, it's divisible by 3, yes, it's even, that tells me that yes, 6 is a factor of 72. Just had to apply the divisibility rule. And if you need to, you just go back in the video and you can, you can view those. You might write them down in your notes as well. All right, some that you might try. You might try some of these problems. Try to use the different, uh, um, excuse me, try to use the different methods as well. Try drawing a model. Try using long division. Try using divisibility rules. You know, some of these problems are better or better uh, answered, easier to do with one method over another. So try to look at the number and see whether you can use a quick divisibility rule. If not, you might use one of these other methods. So practice on these. Is five a factor of seventy-five? How can you tell? Is seventy-one divisible by six? How can you tell? Twenty is divisible. By what numbers? You have more than one answer for that question. See if you could figure it out.